four two timeline presentation tonight. This one is Dunkirk. One of the most amazing rescues in history of over 300,000 soldiers, French and British, um, saved. Tonight I'll talk to you about the, uh, the, the prelude to the Battle of Dunkirk. Then I'll talk to you about the current situation, uh, the current uh, operation from May 27th uh, to June 4th. And then I will talk to you about, of course, after of uh, the battle. So Operation, Di Operation Dynamo is what it's called. And over 322,000 Allied soldiers were saved in this effort, which involved hundreds of ships, you know, hundreds of civilian ships even. It's amazing. Okay. Now, uh, those, some of those scenes that you just saw earlier were from, of course, that's the uh, Christopher Nolan's newer film, A Dunkirk, very well made. There are some errors in it, but it's it's um, it's quite an accurate depiction of the battle. Um, it's an amazing, um, amazing story told in, in three different parts. So, on the 10th of May, 1940, Winston Churchill became Prime Minister of the United Kingdom. By 26th of May, the British Expeditionary Force and the French First Army were bottled up in a corridor to the sea, about 60 miles, 97 kilometers deep, and 15 miles, 24 kilometers wide. Most of the British forces were still around Lyle, uh, over 40 miles, 64 kilometers from Dunkirk, with the French farther south. Two massive German armies flanked them. General Fokker von Bock, uh, Fedor von Bock's um, Army Group B was to was to the east, and General uh, Gerd von Rundstedt's uh, Army Group A to the west. Both officers were later promoted to field marshal. On the 24th of May, Hitler visited General von Rundstedt's headquarters at, Charville, at Charlesville. The terrain around Dunkirk was thought unsuitable for armor. Von Rundstedt adv advised him the infantry should attack the British forces at Arras, where the British had proved capable of significant action. Uh, <clears throat> while Kleist's armor, uh, von Kleist's armor held the line west and south of Dunkirk to pounce on the Allied forces retreating before Army Group B, Hitler, who was familiar with Flanders' marches, Flanders marshes from the First World War agreed. This order allowed the Germans to consolidate their gains and prepare for a southward advance against the remaining French forces. Luftwaffe commander Hermann Göring um, asked for the chance to destroy the forces in Dunkirk. The Allied forces destruction was thus initially assigned to the Air Force while the German infantry organized in Army Group B. Von Wundstedt later called this one of the great turning points of the war. On May 24, 1940, the Allied troops on the French and Belgian coast had been totally surrounded uh, by powerful German tank columns, about 800,000 men in total pushing into France from the Ardennes, rendering them essentially defenseless against impending, the impending German onslaught. And then came a brief uh, reprise as the attackers suddenly stopped for 48 hours, allowing the British to dig in and create a defensive perimeter, setting the stage for the evacuation. For reasons that, are still, that still aren't clear, Hitler, over the protests of his own generals and to the bafflement of historians, had ordered um, Guderian to halt for two days to rest and resupply. It's true the German troops were worn out after two weeks of fighting, and Hitler may have worried about a repeat of 1914 when exhausted German troops were forced to withdraw at the Marne. He may also have been swayed by Hermann Göring, chief of the German Luftwaffe, who boasted that air power alone could destroy the helpless Allied forces at Dunkirk. Al, uh, less likely is the um, speculation that Hitler purposefully let the, Allied go, let the Allies go to appear... Um, 
magnanimous, magnanimous or merciful as a prelude to peace negotiations, which was not really in keeping with his character. In the end, we will probably never know why Hitler choked. But here is the map of uh, the ensuing with the battle, ensuing battle, and then the evacuation. Here's the British Expeditionary Force here. Dunkirk and all over the new point. Uh, 26th of May. Uh, here is, of course, the first pushed in. Uh, this, here's the surrendered um, 28th of May forces. There are 99 soldiers that are over it. There's a British unit that surrendered. Uh, while helping the uh, rest of the forces escape to Dunkirk. Some of them were led uh, as POWs uh, for two days straight or, or, or more um, to, a, to camps. Some of them were beaten. A few of them were shot. Um, and amazing. So the defensive perimeter established 28th of May. Evacuation completed in 4th 5th of June. Kawas isolated on May 22nd and surrendered May 27th. Uh, here's the count. Here's the French counterattacks uh, on the French line, 23rd of May. And the 10th Army counterattacked May 27th to June 1st. The von Rudenstedt's army, Army Group A, Bock here, and uh, the 18th Army there, 16th or the 6th, sorry. And fourth, and then von Kleist and Hoth. Yeah, and uh, Kleist is pushing further down along the French coast. So here's Northwestern Europe, 1940 campaign in the West. On the 26th of May, Anthony Eden told General Lord uh, Gort, a commander in chief of the British Expeditionary Force, that he might need to fight back to the West and ordered him to prepare plans for the evacuation, but without telling the French or the Belgians. Gord had foreseen the order, and preliminary plans were already in hand. The first such plan for a defense along the Lys Canal could not be carried out because of German advances on 26th of May. With the, the 2nd and 50th Divisions pinned down, and the 1st and 5th and 48th Divisions under heavy attack, the second division took heavy casualties uh, trying to keep a uh, corridor open, being reduced to brigade strength, but they succeeded. They succeeded. The first, third, fourth, and forty-second divisions escaped along the corridor that day, as did one about one third of the French First Army. As the Allies fell back, they disabled their artillery and vehicles and destroyed their stores. Better was just. Uh, Battle of White Chist. Uh, White. Which I have. Sorry. I had to pronounce that. Uh, Gort had sent um, Lieutenant General uh, Ronald Adam, commanding 3rd Corps, um, ahead to build the defensive perimeter around Dunkirk. Lieutenant General Alan Brooke, commanding 2nd Corps, um, was to conduct a holding action with the 3rd, 4th, and 5th and 50th Divisions along the, the, the Ypres uh, Cormans Canal, uh, Cormans Canal, as far as, uh, as far as Weiser, mm. <coughs> Yeser, rather, sorry, while the rest of the British Expeditionary Force fell back. The Battle of Weisschet, uh over the border in Belgium was the toughest action Brooke faced in this role. On 26th of May, the Germans made a reconnaissance uh, in force against the British position. At midday, on 27th of May, they launched a full-scale attack with three divisions south of Ypres. A confused battle fo uh, followed, where visibility was low because of forested or urban terrain, and communications were poor because uh, the British at the time used no radios below battalion level and telephone wires had been cut. The Germans used infiltration tactics to get among uh, the British, who were beaten back. The, the route back from Brooks' position to Dunkirk passed through the town of Popering, known most, known to most British sources as Popering, 
Paparenge, Paparenge, where uh, there was a bottleneck at a bridge over the, the Yeiser Canal. Most of the main roads in the area converged on that bridge. On 27th May, the Luftwaffe bombed the resulting traffic jam uh, through um, thoroughly for two hours, destroying the, or immobilizing about 80% of the vehicles. Another Luftwaffe raid on the night of 28th and 29th of May was illuminated by flares as well as the light from burning vehicles. Here's just another picture of one of the towns of British Expeditionary Force vehicles just being left behind. Amazing. Well, they were still moving into position. They ran headlong into the German 255th Division, who were trying to outflank Gort. Armored cars of the 12th Lancers stopped the Germans at Newport itself. A confused battle raged all along the perimeter through 28th of May. Germ uh, command and control on the British side disintegrated, and the perimeter was driven slowly inwards toward Dunkirk. Meanwhile, Erwin Rommel had surren uh, surrounded five divisions of the French First Army near Lyle. Although completely cut off and heavily outnumbered, the French fought on for four days until General uh, Moline, uh, in the, the siege of Lyle in 1940, thereby kept uh, keeping uh, seven German divisions from the from the assault on Dunkirk, saving an estimated 100,000 Allied troops. So he had been uh, outnumbered, but fought there for four days, fought the Germans off. In recognition of the garrison's stubborn defense, German General Kurt Wagner, uh, Kurt, uh, Kurt Weiger, uh, granted them the, uh, the honors of war saluting the French troops as they marched past in parade formation with rifles shouldered. <clears throat> the defense of the Dunkirk perimeter held through um, throughout 29th and 30th of May with the Allies fighting back by degrees, different degrees, until eventually that they were able to take get out over 322,000 off of the shore and back to England. So here's one, another picture of uh, Allied troops uh, retreating. Uh, here's uh, one, Brit one French soldier uh, and then more British troops with the Brody helmets um, marching down the line. Also on 23rd, or sorry, uh, 23rd, sorry, also on 31st of May, General von uh, Kouchler uh, assumed command of all German forces at Dunkirk. His plan was simple, launch an all-out attack across the whole front at 1100 hours on 1st of June. Strangely, von, Klaut, von Kauchler, uh, Kauchler sorry, ignored uh, a radio intercept telling him the British were abandoning the eastern end of the line to fall back to Dunkirk itself. During the night of 31st May, June 1st, 1940, uh, Marcus Irving, uh, Marcus uh, Irving Andrews won the Victoria Cross in the battle when he defended 1,000 yards, 910 meters of territory. And here are the German troops looking across. Among many examples of Germany's evil genius uh, for uh, psychological warfare, one of the most famous was the decision to equip its Ju-87B Junkers, Junkers dive bombers with air-powered uh, sirens that emitted a shrieking, unearthly wail as the plane went into attack. The siren, known as the Jericho Trumpet, was intended to spread terror among enemy troops and civilians on the ground, and it worked. To this day, the Jericho Trumpet is one of the most recognizable and terrifying sounds of war. It was uh, certainly one of the lasting impressions of the Dunkirk evacuation for ordinary troops caught beneath the German bombs. And this is not a very well-known fact. Um, Lieutenant uh, Illiman, a British gunner who was waiting to be evacuated on Melo uh, uh, Les Bains Beach, later recalled the Stukas diving, zooming, screeching and wheeling over our heads like a flock of huge, infernal seagulls. And 
here's a J87 here. The German invasion of France began on, of course, May 10th, 1940, after, of course, at the same time exactly as the invasion of Luxembourg, Belgium, and Holland, which ended um, some days after the, as the, the last presentation that I've done. Uh, I've mentioned the same day Winston Churchill became Prime Minister. It was May 10th. By May 14th, when he paid his first official visit to Britain's ally, Holland, um, Holland had capitulated, and Paris was preparing for evacuation. But an even worse surprise was in store. In one of the most famous passages of military history, Churchill recounted the moment he learned that the French did not have any reserve. I then asked, where's the strategic reserve? And breaking into French, Les Mas de Manoeuvre, um, General Gamelin, turned to me and, with a shake of the head and a shrug, replied, Falcon, there is none. I was dumbfounded. What were we to think of the great French army and its highest chief? It had never occurred to me then any uh, command then any commanders would have uh, left themselves unprovided with a mass uh, of maneuver unprovided with a massive maneuver. This was one of the greatest surprises I um, have had in my life. So that's one thing that uh, Winston Churchill had, said, uh, had suddenly been shocked by is that the French didn't have any reserve troops in play. Here's some some troops here. Uh, some of them are uh, riding home. Um, this is certainly something um, that is around, happening on a regular basis. <clears throat> Winston Churchill, First Lord of the Admiralty, is called to replace Neville Chamberlain as British Prime Minister following the, the latter's resignation, uh, the latter's resignation after losing a confidence vote in the House of Commons. In 1938, uh, Prime Minister Chamberlain signed the Munich Agreement with Nazi leader Adolf Hitler himself, giving the, Sunder, the Sudetenland region of Czechoslovakia over to German conquest, but bringing, uh, as Chamberlain promised, peace in our time. In September 1939, that peace was shattered by Hitler's invasion of Poland. Chamberlain declared war against Germany, but during the night, uh, but during the next eight months, sorry, has showed himself to be ill-equipped for the daunting task of saving Europe from Nazi from Nazi conquest. After British forces failed to prevent the German occupation of Norway in April 1940. Chamberlain lost the support of many members of his Conservative Party. On the 10th of May, Hitler invaded the Low Countries, Belgium, Luxembourg, and the Netherlands, and then France. The same day, Chamberlain formally lost the confidence of the House of Commons. Churchill, who was known for his military leadership ability, was appointed British Prime Minister in his place. He formed an all-party coalition and quickly won the popular support of Britons. On the 13th of May, in his first speech before the House of Commons, Prime Minister Winston Churchill declared that, I have nothing to offer but blood, toil, tears, and sweat, and offered an outline of his bold plans for British resistance. In the first year of his administration, Britain stood alone against Nazi Germany. But Churchill promised his country and the world that the British people would never surrender. They never did. So here's Winston Churchill. He's a great leader of his time. Harold Alexander, one of the major field commanders of the um, of the British military, Field Marshal Harold Rupert uh, Lefford George Alexander, first Earl Alexander of Tunis. Um, on December, he was born, of course, December 10th, 1891, and dies on June 16th, 1969, was a senior British Army officer who served with, with distinction in both the First World War and the Second World War, and afterwards as Governor General of Canada, the, seven, the 17th since Canadian Confederation. 
Following the outbreak of the Second World War in September 1939, Alexander brought the 1st Division to France, where it became part of the British Expeditionary Force and served there for the next eight months. In May 1940, when the German army invaded France, he successfully led the division's withdrawal to Dunkirk, where it was evacuated to England, along with the rest of the British Expeditionary Force. Shortly after Major General Bernard Montgomery had been appointed to command the 2nd Corps, and before that the 3rd Division, Alexander was, while still on the beachhead, placed in command of, of 1st Corps, and left the Eastern Mole on the destroyer uh, Venomous late on June 2nd, um, after ensuing that all British, uh, ensuring, uh, ensuring that all British troops had been evacuated in recognition of his services in the field from March to June 1940, Alexander was again mentioned in dispatches. Field Marshal John Standish uh, Surtees. Um, so this is uh, Prendergast Barracker 6 Vin uh, Viscount Gort. Following the period of the phony war, the Wehrmacht's attack and breakthrough in the Ardennes in 1940 succeeded in splitting the French and British armies from each other and on witnessing the astonishing total collapse of the French army. Before the Wehrmacht's invasion, Gort took the unilateral decision to abandon his orders received from the British government for a south southward attack to be made in support to support the French army. Instead, on the 25th of May 1940, ordered a retreat by the British Expeditionary Force, ordering a retreat by the British Exped Expeditionary Force northwards to the French coast. On reaching the coast, Gort oversaw the in mass retirement of the British Expeditionary Force back to the British Isles, <clears throat> involving the Battle of Dunkirk and the Dunkirk evacuation, while France was defeated and surrendered to the armies of the Third Reich four weeks later. <clears throat> on the 26th of May, 1940, Tenet, Commander Tenet, Ad Real Ad Admiral Tenet, was appointed senior naval officer ashore at Dunkirk and ordered to Dover, um, where he took command of a naval party of eight officers and 160 men. Tenet's party was dispatched on board the destroyer Wolfhound to aid the, in the evacuation of more than 300,000 British and French troops as well as Belgian troops. Yeah, that it were left stranded when France fell to the Nazis. Tenet's task was to organize the men and get them onto the ships waiting to take them. Tenet stayed right up until the last ships left on the 2nd of June. Patrolling the beaches of Dunkirk with a megaphone searching for British troops, Tenet was lauded for his efforts at Dunkirk and was appointed companion of the Order of the, of the Bath on the 7th of June 1940. The ordinary sailors under his command took to calling him Dunkirk Joe. Admiral Sir William George Bill Tennant, uh, so of course born on 2nd January 1890, dies on uh, 26th July 1963, was a British naval officer. Of course uh, he was um, lauded for overseeing the successful evacuation of Dunkirk in 1940. Tennant subsequently served as captain of the battle cruiser HMS Repulse when it searched for German capital ships in the Atlantic. <clears throat> Admiral Sir uh, Bertram Home Ramsey. Okay, so this he was born 1883, uh, January 20th, and um, died on, of course, uh, January 2nd, 1945, was a Royal Navy officer. Of course, he commanded the destroyer HMS Broke during the First World War. In the Second World War, he was responsible for the Dunkirk evacuation in 1940, the overall evacuation. As Vice Admiral Dover, um, Ramsey was responsible uh, for the Dunkirk evacuation, codenamed Operation Dynamo working from the tunnels beneath Dover Castle. He and his staff worked for nine days straight to rescue troops trapped in France by the German forces. 
for his success in bringing home 338,226 British and Allied soldiers from the beaches of Dunkirk. He was asked to personally report on the operation to King George VI. <clears throat> and was made a Knight Commander of the Order of the Bath. Then Marie Charles Abreu, this is a um, French uh, commander. Abreu worked on in cooperation with the British troops during the evacuation of Dunkirk in 1940. Even though he had not been uh, not been informed of it of it uh, prior to the operation, the operation began on the 26th of May with the requisitioning of several uh, private boats in attempts to organize resist as this assistance from the French Navy. On the 29th of May, the evacuation began. Abreu was uh, was one of the last to be evacuated. After evacuation, uh, Abreu was uh, based in Charburg, where, as senior officer, he was forced to surrender the port to the Germans on 19th of June. <clears throat> Gord von Rundstedt, German commander, uh, he was recalled at the beginning of the, the Second World War as commander of the of Army Group South in the invasion of Poland. He commanded Army Group A during the Battle of France and requested the halt order during uh, the Battle of Dunkirk. Um, he was promoted to the rank of Field Marshal in 1940. Hermann Goring. Goring and other senior officers were conceived, uh, were concerned that Germany was not yet ready for war. Um, in the beginning of the of the war, um, but Hitler insisted on pushing ahead as soon as possible. The invasion of Poland, the opening action of World War II, began at dawn, of course, uh, September 1st, 1939. Later in the day, speaking to the Reichstag, Hitler de designated Göring as his successor to the, as fear of all Germany. If anything should befall me, with Hess as a second alternative. Big German victories followed one after the other in quick succession. With the help of the Luftwaffe, the Polish Air Force was defeated within a week. Fostum uh, Jagger seized a vital airfield in Norway and captured Fort Urban Imal in Belgium, which I had mentioned. Goring's Luftwaffe played, a crit played critical roles in the battles of the Netherlands, Belgium, and France in May 1940, and he was an overall in command of the Luftwaffe um, during the Battle of Dunkirk, in the Dunkirk operations. After the fall of France, Hitler awarded Goring the Grand Cross of the Iron Cross for his successful leadership. Late on 23rd of May, a halt order was ordered by General uh, Obergerd uh, von Rundstedt, as, as like I've stated, commander of Army Group A. Adolf Hitler approved this order the next day and had the German High Command sent confirmation to the front. Destroying the trapped British Expeditionary Force, French and Belgium armies uh, was left to the Luftwaffe under, until the order was uh, rescinded on the 26th of May. This gave Allied forces time to construct defensive works and pull back large numbers of troops to fight the Battle of Dunkirk. From 28th to 31st of May, the siege in Lyle the remaining 40, the siege of siege of Lyle, the remaining 40,000 men of the once formidable French First Army fought a delaying action against seven German divisions, including three armored divisions. On the first day, only 7,669 Allied soldiers were evacuated, but by the end of the eighth day, 338,226 had been rescued by a hastily assembled fleet of over 800 vessels. Many troops were t able to embark from the harbor's protective mole uh, onto 39 British Royal Navy destroyers and four Royal Canadian Navy destroyers, at least three French Navy destroyers and a variety of civilian merchant ships. Others had to wade out from the beaches, uh, waiting for hours in shoulder deep water. Some were ferried to the larger ships by what became known as the Little Ships of Dunkirk.
a flotilla of hundreds of merchant marine boats, fishing boats, pleasure craft, yachts, and lifeboats called into service from Britain. A British expeditionary force lost 68,000 soldiers from during the French campaign and had to abandon nearly all of its tanks, vehicles, and equipment. In his June 4th speech, Churchill also reminded the country that we must be very careful not to assign to this deliverance the attributes of a victory. Wars are not won by evacuations. Here are soldiers being, this is a famous photo of Dunkirk, soldiers uh, were strafed and bombed by German aircraft while awaiting transport. Stuka dive bombers would be screaming down on German, on uh, British and French and Belgian men. Without informing the French, the British began planning on uh, 20th of May for Operation Dynamo, the evacuation of the British Expeditionary Force. This planning was headed by Vice Admiral Burton Ramsey at the naval headquarters below Dover Castle, from which he briefed Churchill as it was underway. Ships began gathering at Dover for the evacuation. On the 20th of May, the British Expeditionary Force sent General, uh, Brigadier General um, Gerald Whitefield to Dunkirk to start evacuating unnecessary personnel. Overwhelming, overwhelmed by what he later described as a somewhat alarming movement towards Dunkirk by both officers and men, due to a sort of shortage of food and water. He had to send many along without thoroughly checking their credentials. Even officers ordered to stay behind to aid the evacuation disappeared onto the boats. <clears throat> Here is, I believe it's Ramsey, or, or I think it's either Ramsey or, yeah, no, it would be General Whitefield. This is General Whitefield here, sorry. I think it is, yep, General Whitefield here, so looking at yeah, the men, uh, and trying to expect, inspect the, a few of them. Um, on the 22nd of May, Churchill ordered the British Expeditionary Force to attack southward in uh, coordination with the French First Army under General George uh, Blanchard to reconnect with the remainder of the French forces. This proposed action was dubbed uh, the Wigan Plan after General Maxime Weigand appointed a Supreme Commander after Gamelin's dismissal on the 18th of May. <clears throat> on the 25th of May, Gort had to abandon, um, Commander Gort, the British commander, had to abandon any hope of achieving this objective and withdrew on his own initiative, along with Blanchard's forces, behind the Lys Canal, part of a canal system that reached the Sea of Gravelines. Sluice gates, uh, Sluice gates had already been uh, opened all along the canal to flood the system and create a barrier, the canal line, against the German advance. By 24th of May, the Germans had captured the port of Boulogne and surrounded uh, Calais, Calais. So Calais was surrounded. The engineers of the Second Panzer Division under General Major Rudolf Vail, um, Rudolf Vail, built five bridges over the canal line, and only one British battalion bared the way to Dunkirk. On the 23rd of May, at the suggestion of Fourth Army Commander. General Field Marshal Gunther von Kuhn, uh, Runstead had ordered uh, panzer units to halt, concerned about the vulnerability of his flanks and the question of supply to forward troops. And of course, that halt, um, <clears throat> the halt, there was a halt that, there that I mentioned earlier that Hitler had ordered as well. And uh, that uh, might have been Hitler's impression on it. On things as well. He was he was also uh, concerned that the marshy ground around Dunkirk would prove unsuitable for tanks, and he wished uh, to conserve them for a later operation. In some units, tank losses were uh, thirty to fifty percent. Hitler uh, was also apprehensive, and on a visit to Army Group A headquarters on the twenty fourth of May, 
He endorsed the order. Air Marshal Hermann Göring urged Hitler to let the Luftwaffe, aided by Army Group B, finish off the British to the uh, consternation of General uh, Franz Helder, who noted in his diary that the Luftwaffe was dependent upon the weather and air crews were worn out after two weeks of battle. Rundstedt issued another order, which was sent uncoded. It was picked up by the Royal Air Force RAF Y Service Intelligence Network at 12.42 p.m. By the order of the Fuhrer, attack northwest of Arras is to be limited to the general line lens Bethune Airs Sid uh, Omar uh, Gra Gravel Lines. The canal will not be crossed. Later that day, Hitler issued Directive 13, which called for the Luftwaffe to defeat uh, the trapped Allied forces and stop their escape. At 1530 hours on 26th of May, Hitler ordered the Panzer groups to continue their advance, but most units took another 16 hours to attack. The delay gave the Allies time to prepare defensive uh, defenses that are, were vital to, for the evacuation and prevented the Germans from stopping the Allied retreat from Lyell. The halt order has been the subject of much discussion by historians. Guderian considered the failure to order a timely assault on Dunkirk to be one of the major German mistakes on the Western Front. Rundstedt called it one of the greatest great turning points of the war and that's where that came in earlier is uh, people a lot of people don't know that they halted but it's one of these parts of the war that it makes you wonder it's very de debated about among numerous historians in Meinstein's army and Meinstein described it as one of Hitler's most critical mistakes B.H. Lido Hart interviewed many of the generals after the war and put together a picture of Hitler's strategic thinking on the matter. Hitler, Hitler believed that once Britain's troops left continental Europe, they would be over, they would never return. So here it is, um, the situation, uh, June 4th, and operations of course here, you can see since May 21st. Uh, the line from May 21st, the line from, so, and the, the retreat to the to the waters. Operation Dynamo was the rescue operation implemented by the, of course, the Royal Navy. It was coordinated by, of course, Ramsey, and his team. They were actually at Dover Castle. There, there beneath the fortress, a network of tunnels deep within the cliffs became the nerve center, controlling the evacuation of Allied forces. From 19th of May, realizing that rescue by sea would be necessary, Ramsey and his staff at Dover were making plans and arranging for ships to evacuate the British Expeditionary Force. On 26th of May, they were ordered to put the plans into direct action. And you can see here, small pleasure craft. Um, they were, you know, they were <coughs> requisitioned by the Navy to go in and get every last person they could off that um, off that beach. Here's the evacuation route here. So here's France and of course here's Dunkirk, uh, Melo de Bains, uh, Newport and uh, Calais and um, so you can see here the evacuation route um, route Y, route X, route Z um, and this, these are the routes to England. So the Dover, Ramsgate, Margate, Gull here, and uh, through the English Channel. This is Operation Dynamo. So you can see here uh, the British line, British perimeter, British sea routes here, the German attacks. The Allies had to defend a small pocket around Dunkirk that was under constant attack. Many thousands of men were crammed into streets and buildings along the beaches, so they were very vulnerable to intense German air attacks and shelling. Um, there was little time to plan and organize an orderly evacuation 
and effective means of communication were scarce. The Germans had put the main docks at Dunkirk, the best place from which to evacuate troops out of action. The two alternatives, uh, the Spinley Breakwater or Mole on the east side of the harbour and the beaches to the north of the port were far from ideal. The beaches at Dunkirk um, shelved gently into the sea. Even at high tide a destroyer couldn't approach within a mile of the shore and troops had to be ferried out in small craft. The rescue was painfully slow at first. Only 8,000 men were rescued on the first day. It took several days for the operation to gather pace. So that first scene of the movie Dunkirk with uh, Christopher Nolan, um, here you can see the mole and part of the mole and, um, and going on to those smaller um, areas where um, that hospital ship was sunk in the first uh, scenes of the movie and, uh, and those were the men that were trying to, these are the first days of the um, invasion or of the uh, evacuation. So here, uh, some, some of the small pleasure craft um, that play a major role in this evacuation. The little ships played an important part in the evacuation. Roundy and his team quickly realized that these small boats would be able to get across to the beach, uh, to the mole, and ferry the troops out to larger ships. By the 31st of May, hundreds of civilian vessels, from fishing boat, uh, fishing smacks, to cockle boats, uh, to lifeboats and sailing barges, had answered the Royal Navy's call for help and crossed the English Channel to Dunkirk. Crewed mainly by volunteers, these tiny vessels bravely and repeatedly picked up soldiers, uh, queuing patiently uh, on queue patiently on the beaches and in the water, and ferried them out to the waiting larger ships. Under a severe attack from German aircraft and artillery, many also took troops back across the channel themselves. But it's a common misconception that the little ships evacuated most of the men. In fact, over two-thirds, 239,465 reached safety via the mole, while 98,761 were rescued from the beaches. Um, so they, a lot of those ships were, uh, a lot of the bigger ships, they were brought them in by the smaller boats and, and continuing on. And the role of the Royal Navy, especially its destroyers, was paramount in the operation. Of course, they carried the vast majority of the amount of men. Big ships, mainly destroyers, minesweepers, and requisitioned merchant vessels with naval crews crossed to Dunkirk time and time again without rest and suffered terrible losses. 26th and 27th of May. The retreat was undertaken amid chaotic conditions, with abandoned vessels docking the road, uh, blocking, sorry, abandoned vessels blocking the roads and a flood of refugees heading in the opposite direction. Due to wartime censorship and the desire to keep up British morale, the full extent of the unfolding disaster at Dunkirk was not initially publicized. A special service attended by King George um, the Sixth was held in Westminster Abbey on the 26th of May, which was declared a national day of prayer. The Archbishop of Canterbury led prayers for our soldiers in dire peril in France. Similar prayers, similar prayers were offered in synagogues and churches throughout the UK that day, confirming to the public their suspicion of the desperate plight of the troops. Just before 1900, at, on 26th of May, Churchill ordered Dynamo to begin, by which time 28,000 men had already departed. The initial plans called for the recovery of 45,000 men from the, beat, from the British Expeditionary Force within two days, at which time German troops were expected to block further evacuation. Only 25,000 men escaped during this period, including 7,669 the first day. On the 27th of May, the first full day of the evacuation, one cruiser, eight destroyers, 
and 26 other craft were active. Admiralty officers uh, combed nearly uh, nearby boat yards for small craft that could ferry personnel from the beaches out to larger craft in the harbor, as well as larger vessels that could load from the docks. An emergency call was put out for additional help, and by the 31st of May, nearly 400 small craft were voluntarily and enthusiastically taking part in the effort. The same day, the Luftwaffe heavily bombed Dunkirk, both the town and the dock installations. As the water supply was knocked out, the resulting fires could not be extinguished. An estimated thousand civilians were killed. One-third of the remaining population of the town, RAF squadrons were ordered to provide air superior supremacy for the Royal Navy during evacuation. Their efforts shifted to covering Dunkirk and the English Channel, protecting the evacuation fleet. The Luftwaffe was met by 16 squadrons of the Royal Air Force, who claimed 38 kills on 27th of May, while losing 14 aircraft. Many more RAF fighters, uh, hurricanes, um, and Spitfires, certainly Spitfires, uh, many more RAF fighters sustained damage and were subsequently written off. On the German side, Kampfschweider uh, KG-2 and KG-3 suffered the heaviest casualties. German losses amount to uh, 23rd, uh, 23 Dornier DO-17s. KG-1 and KG-4 bombed the beach and harbor, and KG-54 uh, of the Luftwaffe sank the 8,000-ton steamer Aden. Uh, Junkers, Junkers uh, Ju-87 Stuka dive bombers sank the troop ship uh, Court de Azer, uh, Court de Azer. Um, Sorry, the Luftwaffe uh, engaged with 300 bombers, which were protected by 550 fighter sorties, and attacked Dunkirk in 12 raids. They dropped 15,000 high explosive and 30,000 incendiary bombs, destroying the oil tanks and wrecking the harbor. Number 11 Group RAF flew, flew 22 patrols with 287 aircraft this day in formation of up to 20 aircraft. Altogether, over 3,500 sorties were flown in support of Operation Dynamo. The RAF continued to inflict a heavy toll on the German bombers throughout the week Soldiers be, uh, being bombed and strafed while awaiting transport were for the most part unaware of the efforts of the RAF to protect them. As most of the dogfights took place far from the beaches, as a result, many British soldiers bitterly accused the airmen of doing nothing to help. <clears throat> on the 25th and 26th of May, the Luftwaffe uh, focused on their attention on Allied pockets, holding out uh, at Calais, Lyle and Amens, uh, Amens, and did not attack Dunkirk. Calais, held by the British Expeditionary Force, surrendered on 26th of May. Remnants of the French First Army, surrounded at Lyle, fought off seven German divisions. And of course, and several of them were armored. So, hundreds of tanks. Panzer twos, Panzer threes, Panzer fours, Panzer ones, until 31st of May, um, and that's what I mentioned earlier. That was part of that. Um, when the remaining 35,000 soldiers were forced to surrender, running out of food ammunition, uh, of course they uh, held at shoulder arms uh, to the to the defenders of Lyle uh, in recognition for their bravery in which I've mentioned earlier. So the Belgian army, which I've mentioned before as well, um, surrendered on the 28th of May, leaving a large gap to the east of Dunkirk. Several British divisions were rushed in to cover that side. The Luftwaffe flew fewer sorties over Dunkirk on the 28th of May, reaching their, uh, switching their attention to the Belgian ports of Ostend and Newport. Uh, the weather over Dunkirk was not uh, conducive to dive or low-level bombing. 
Uh, the RAF flew 11 patrols and 321 sorties, claiming 23 destroyed for the loss of 13 aircraft. Um, on the 28th of May, 17,804 soldiers arrived at British ports. On the 29th of May, 47,000 British. So the, the numbers differ. The numbers differ certainly in a uh, number of different reports. Uh, 47,310 British troops were rescued. But rescued, as the Luftwaffe J87 exacted a heavy toll on the shipping. The British destroyer HMS uh, Grenade was sunk, and the French destroyer Maestro was crippled. Uh, while her sister ships, each laden with 500 men, were damaged by near misses. British destroyers Jaguar, Verity, uh, and Jaguar and Verity were badly damaged, but, but uh, escaped the harbor. <clears throat> Two trawlers uh, disintegrated in the attack. Later, the passenger steamer uh, SS uh, Finet uh, SS Vanilla sank with 600 men aboard um, at the pier, but the men were able to get off. The paddle steamer HMS um, Crested Eagle suffered a direct hit, caught fire, and sank with several ca with severe casualties. Sorry, the raiders also destroyed the two uh, rail-owned ships the SS uh, Norina and the SS Normania. So uh, the ships are being sunk uh, by, you know, 500, 250 kilogram bombs, uh, different types of bombs, um, by, of course, the dive bombers. And the Dornier 17s, uh, HE 111s, and um, <clears throat> the Donair 17s, uh, Junker J87s, uh, they're going in and they're, and if you've seen the, the movie, of course, uh, that uh, passenger ship that was sunk there is one of these. Uh, I'm not sure exactly which one, but that was a hospital, that was a hospital ship. It was uh, equipped um, for duties, uh, but was a passenger liner uh, before that. <clears throat> Of the five major German attacks, just two were contested by RAF fighters. The British lost 16 fighters in, the, in nine patrols. German losses amount to 11 JU-87s destroyed or damaged. On 30th May, Churchill received word that all British divisions were now behind the defensive lines, along with more than half of the French at First Army. By this time, the perimeter ran along a series of canals about seven miles, 11 kilometers from the coast, in marshy country, not suitable for tanks. With the docks in the harbor rendered unusable by German air attacks, senior naval officer Captain, later Admiral William Tennant, initially ordered men to be evacuated from the beaches. When this proved too slow, rerouted the evacuees uh, to two long stone and concrete breakwaters called the east and west moles as well as the beaches and those are the moles <clears throat> the moles were not designed to dock ships but despite this uh, the majority of troops rescued from dunkirk were taken off this way almost 200,000 troops embarked on ships from the east mole which stretched nearly a mile out to sea over the next week <clears throat> so amazing um, and little boats are going to get them to bring them out James Campbell uh, Clouston uh, Piermaster on the East Mole organized and regulated the flow of men along the mole into the waiting ships once more loud a low clouds kept Luftwaffe activity to a minimum. Thank God. There were sitting ducks. Nine RAF patrols were mounted, with no German formation encountered. The following day, the Luftwaffe sank one transport and damaged 12 others with, for 17 losses. The British claimed 38 kills, which was an exaggeration. 
the RAF and fleet air arm lost 28 aircraft. So here are some of the troops. I think this might be from the movie. Or um, here we have uh, Buffer's anti-aircraft guns, and of course they've got their Lee Enfield rifles, and they're just waiting um, with what's left of their units to get off the beaches. Of the total 338,226 soldiers, several hundred were unarmed Indian mule handlers on detachment from the Royal Indian Royal Indian Army Service Corps, forming four of the six units of Force K-6 transport. Uh, Pepriot uh, muleteers were also present. Um, three units were successfully evacuated and one captured. Also present at Dunkirk were a small number of French Senegalese soldiers and, Mar and Moroccans as well. The next day, an additional 53,823 men were embarked, including the French, uh, the first uh, French soldiers. Mm, sorry, uh, yep, first French soldiers. Uh, no, all good. Lord Gort and 68,014 men were evacuated on uh, 31st of May, leaving Major General Harold Alexander in command of this rear guard. A further 64,429 Allied soldiers departed on uh, the 1st of June before the increasing air attacks prevented uh, further daylight evacuation. The British rearguard of 4,000 men left on the night of uh, 2nd 3rd of June. An additional 75,000 French troops were retrieved over the nights of uh, 2 the 4th of June, before the operation fully ended, finally ended. Um, the remainder of the rearguard, 40,000 French troops, surrendered on 4th of June. Churchill made a point of stating in his We Shall Fight on the Beaches address in uh, the House on uh, 4th of June that the evacuation had been made possible through the efforts of the RAF. The French fought a well. Uh, the French fought a hopeless battle to cover the evacuation, and that is true. Um, although Churchill and other Brits were quick to criticize the failure of France's general during the fall of France, many ordinary French soldiers and officers fought bravely and honorably. And one hopeless last stand, in, in particular, probably helped enable the, the successful evacuation of Dunkirk. As British and French troops withdrew to Dunkirk, 40 miles to the southeast, French troops in uh, two corps, uh, two corps uh, groups of the French First Army staged a ferocious defensive against several German divisions on the 28th and 31st of May 1940, refusing to surrender and mounting several uh, attempts to break out despite being heavily outnumbered. 110,000 to the 40,000. <clears> the valiant French effort, led by General uh, Jean Baptiste um, uh, Moligny, um, helped tie up three uh, German tank divisions under uh, General Erwin Rommel, enabling the British Expeditionary Force and the remaining troops of the French First Army to retreat and dig in at Dunkirk ultimately saving another 100,000 Allied troops. Here's a Char B, one of the tanks that uh, I had mentioned in the last uh, presentation I did. The Char B is the heaviest tank in the French arsenal at the time. It's heavier than most uh, German um, opponents at the time, even uh, you know elements of the Panzer III's. Um, and, uh, of course, the design that the French have, of course, that you can see it is a higher, a higher design of a tank, so um, much taller. It, so it not it's not as a stealthy of a design to be able to um, go in undetected, but uh, it is one of their it is their most heavily armored tank in this in in this theater. The Royal Navy provided the anti-aircraft cruiser HMS Calcutta 
39 destroyers, and many other craft. The Merchant Navy supplied passenger fares, hospital ships, and other vessels. Britain's uh, Belgium, Dutch, Canadian, Polish, and French allies provided vessels as well. Admiral Ramsey arranged for around a thousand copies uh, to be made of the required charts, had buoys laid um, around the Goodwin Sands and down to Dunkirk, and organized a, a flow, organized a flow of shipping. The larger ships, such as destroyers, were able to carry about 900 men per trip. Um, the soldiers mostly traveled um, on the upper decks for fear of being trapped below if the ship sank. After the loss, on the 29th of May, 19 British and French ship, Navy ships, plus three of the larger requisition vessels, the Admiralty withdrew their eight best destroyers for the future defense of the country. Here's one of the Royal Navy destroyers here. So the number of British ships and types of vessels uh, totally engaged and sunk. So one cruiser um, was there, of course, and it was uh, heavily damaged, I believe, and then destroyers. So it was engaged, and we had 30, of course, the British had 39 destroyers um, that were able to get there and rescue men. Nineteen or so, 19 sunk and six engaged. Sloops, corvettes, and gunboats. Nine sunk, some damaged. Um, minesweepers, so 36 minesweepers were there to help support. Five engaged and seven sunk. Trawlers and drifters. Now all of the, apparently, so they these numbers were engaged, so the numbers were engaged. 113, so 113 were engaged in, in this uh, <clears throat> operation. And 17 were sunk, um, two were damaged. So they engaged in the operations and also engaged by enemy fire. Special operations vessels, so there's three of them, and one was sunk. Ocean boarding vessels, three engaged, and one was sunk, and one damaged. Um, torpedo boats, anti submarine boats, 13 of them damaged. Former yacht. Um, and uh, of course, with naval crews, there were 40. They had 40 of them there, and apparently 40 were sunk and four were damaged. Um, yachts with naval crews, um, 26 uh, have been engaged in this operation, and then uh, three were sunk. Person personnel ships, there were 45 there. Um, so, and then <clears throat> six were engaged and then, of course sorry eight were engaged and then eight were sunk so hospital carriers so five of them were sunk unbelievable yeah it's just the numbers there are quite uh, quite amazing naval motor boats um, the unknown numbers were sunk but there were 12 there and then 34 type boats uh, Unknown number if, they, if any of them were damaged or sunk. Other small craft. 311 were uh, there, total engaged. So these are the number total engaged, okay? And so unknown number that were sunk. 693 um, um, members that were told that were uh, total number of British ships. That were there and operating uh, as far as this operation, a huge number of uh, it's an it's the largest rescue effort by any navy of uh, during any wartime situation and operation. It's it's quite something. Um, so the Allied ships, of course, uh, of all types, warships of all types, there are 49. And that's including the British. Um, so. And there's unknown number of sunk or damaged, but other vessels uh, total of Allied. The grand total, uh, including Allied ships, French Navy, uh, Belgian Navy, even Royal Canadian Navy, grand total is 861. 
Uh, so, amazing. Three routes were located to the evacuating vessels. The shortest was Route Z, a distance of 39 nautical miles, 72 kilometers, but it entailed hugging the French coast, and thus ships using it were subject to bombardment from onshore batteries, particularly in daylight hours. Route X, uh, although the safest from shore batteries, traveled through a particularly heavily mined portion of the channel. Ships on this route traveled 55 nautical miles, 102 kilometers north out of Dunkirk, proceeded through the uh, Rotingen Pass, and headed toward uh, the North Goodwin Lightship before uh, headed south around the Goodwin Sands to Dover. The route was safest from surface attacks, but the nearby minefields and sandbanks meant it could not be used at night. The longest of the three was uh, Route Y, a distance of 87 nautical miles, 161 kilometers. Using this route increased the sailing time to four hours, double the time required for um, Route Z. This route uh, followed the, the French coast as far as uh, Bredouins, then uh, turned northeast until reaching the the Quint Buoy. The Quint Buoy. Um, so that here, that's the longest route, and of course, the longer route you take, um, more hits from German submarines, German U-boats, uh, were able to engage you, especially at night. Um, here, after making an approximately 135 degree turn, the ship sailed west to the North Goodwin Lightship and headed south around the Goodwin Sands to Dover. So Dover is a major port for for um, the White Cliffs of Dover were very well, um, that view was very well liked by British coming in to, um, onto land. Uh, certainly a, a time of, uh, a view of relief on what would become the, a, also in a sense, a, a victory, but also a major defeat. Ships on, on Route Y were the most likely to be attacked by German surface vessels, submarines, and the Luftwaffe. You knew this was the, the uh, chance to get home, and you kept praying, please God, let us go, get us out, get us out of this mess back to England. To see that ship uh, that came in to pick me uh, and my brother up, it was the most fantastic sight. We saw dogfights up in the air, hoping nothing would happen to us, and we saw one or two terrible sights. Then somebody said, there's Dover. That was uh, when we saw the White Cliffs. The atmosphere was terrific. From hell to heaven was how the feeling was. You felt like a miracle had happened. Harry Garrett, British Army. So here's the evacuation room. Route Y, or so Route Z here, Route Z here, Route X, and then Route Y. So Operation Dynamo, uh, key numbers. <clears throat> From the 26th of May to June 4th, 1940, number of troops rescued 338,226 including 224,000 British, um, 224, 320 British, amazing. Ships involved 933, but that's, uh, numbers differ from the other, from the other, um, sorts of information that I got, uh, just was before this. Ships lost 236 overall, amazing. <clears throat> Here's another major, here's a very good painting of the, from the, uh, the bombings to the, uh, and then, of course, to the lifeboats picking up men from the knolls and uh, bringing them up onto the ships. They're sitting ducks, some of them.
It was a very uh, difficult sight, but they they had men still st they are still fighting the uh, and holding off the Germans as thousands upon thousands of men are escaping to England. Amazing. Dunkirk and a surrender of France that followed some three weeks later left Britain isolated, vulnerable, and under threat of imminent invasion. The British Expeditionary Force had abandoned or destroyed nearly all of its heavy equipment at Dunkirk. Hitler declared the evacuation a decisive victory for Germany, but, for, but by rescuing the bulk of the army in what was the largest and the biggest evacuation in military history, Operation Dynamo returned to Britain a priceless asset. Most of her trained and experienced troops. If they had been lost, the whole, con whole conflict might have taken a very different course. It was a critical moment for Britain in the Second World War. Here's some destroyers, either VW or in different types of destroyers. Um, they're filled with evacuating troops arriving uh, at Dover on the 31st of May, 1940. The evacuation was publicized as a miracle to boost public morale. The successful rescue across seas that stayed um, unusually calm for nine days was thereafter referred to as the miracle of Dunkirk. But as well as this, the terrifying prospect that the depleted British armed forces might have to fight the Germans on the home soil caused the nation uh, galvanized under Winston Churchill um, to devote its time entirely to war. It did so not only effectively but perhaps surprisingly with total confidence in eventual victory. The Dunkirk spirit reflecting a nation united and working against apparently impossible odds to throw Hitler's ambitions was born. <clears throat> and here's more specifics on the number of evacuated troops. Great Britain, of course, 224,320. Uh, also, um, subunits from the co uh, colonized uh, Crown of India, so which is uh, their colonies, the British colonies of India, Crown Rule of India, uh, of course, for the French. Um, France and Belgium had over 140,000 that were evacuated to England. So the French at that time had 18,000 killed in, in this battle and 35,000 captured. Uh, and these are the losses, uh, some of the losses, three destroyers as well. Of course, the colonies of uh, French, the French protectorate of in Morocco and French West African units were there as well. A few members of the Netherlands army, uh, the, the Dutch army, and even members of the Polish forces were there. And even, uh, of course, the, the Royal Canadian Navy and amongst small numbers of units of, of, of Canadians. Uh, participated as well. Before the operation was completed, the prognosis had been gloomy, with Churchill warning the House of Commons on the 28th of May to expect harsh and heavy tidings. Subsequently, Churchill referred to the outcome as a miracle, and the British press presented the evacuation as a disaster turned to triumph. So successfully that Churchill had to remind the country in a speech to the House of Commons on 4th of June that we must be very careful not to assign to this deliverance the attitudes of a victory. Wars are not won by evacuations. Andrews Roberts uh, comments that the confusion over the Dunkirk evacuations is il illustrated by two of the best books on it being called uh, Strange Defeat and Strange Victory. Three British divisions and a host of logistic and labor troops were cut off to the south of the Somme by the German race to the sea. At the end of May, a further two divisions began moving to France with the hope of establishing a second British expeditionary force. The majority of the 51st uh, Highland Division was forced to surrender 
on the 12th of June, but almost 192,000 Allied personnel, 144,000 of them British, were evacuated through various French ports from uh, the 15th to the 25th of June under the code name Operation Ariel, which is another operation smaller than Dunkirk, but it was another um, operation to evacuate hundreds, uh, and, uh, tens of thousands of more uh, British forces. The remaining British forces under the 10th Army as Norman force, uh, as Norman force retreats toward uh, Charbert. Um, <clears throat> So that more forces are pushing, being pushed back by the Germans in, in France. The Germans marched into Paris on the 14th of June, and France surrendered eight days later. The more than 100,000 French troops evacuated from Dunkirk were quickly and effectively shuttled to camps in various parts in southwestern England, where they were temporarily lodged before being repatriated. British troops ferried French troops to Brest, Cherbourg, and other ports in Normandy and, and uh, Brittany. Although, uh, only about half of the repatriated troops were redeployed against the Germans before the surrender of France. Um, for many French soldiers, the Dunkirk evacuation represented only a few weeks delay before being killed or captured by the German army after their return to France. Of the French soldiers evacuated from France in June 1940, about 3,000 joined Charles de Gaulle's uh, Free French Army in Britain. In France, the unilateral British decision to evacuate to Dunkirk rather than counterattack to the south and the perceived preference of the Royal Navy for evacuating British forces at the expense of the French led to some bitter resentment. According to Churchill, French Admiral Francois Dalin uh, or originally ordered that the British forces should receive preference, but on the 31st of May, he intervened at a meeting in Paris to order that the evacuation should proceed on equal terms, on equal terms and that the British would form the rearguard. In fact, 35,000 men who finally surrendered after covering the final evacuations were mostly French soldiers of the 2nd Light Mechanized Division and the 68th Infantry Division. Their resistance allowed the evacuation effort to be extended to the 4th of June, on which date another 26,175 Frenchmen were transported to England. The evacuation presented to the German public as an overwhelming and decisive German victory. On the 5th of June 1940, Hitler stated, Dunkirk has fallen. 40,000 French and English troops are all that remains of the formerly great armies. Formerly great armies. Immeasurable quantities of material um, have been captured. The greatest battle in the history of the world has come to an end. So, um, Overcome, over commander der Wehrmacht, uh, that's be the the um, German High Command (OKW). Um, the German Armed Forces High Command announced the event as the greatest annihilation battle of all time. So here are the numbers of total numbers per day evacuation, beaches, the harbor in total. Um, so you can see from the 27th of May, 28th. Increase 29th, 30th of May, it sped up more. 31st of May, it continued to speed up. 1st of June, uh, 2nd of June, 3rd, 4th, and the total number. So from the beach, 98,671 from the beaches, from the harbor, from the, from the Navy assets, and the bigger ships. 239,555, and that's the total, 303,226. So, losses. Here are the losses. The British Expeditionary Force lost 68,000 soldiers, dead, wounded, missing, or captured. 
from 10th of May until the armistice with France on the, the 22nd of June. So that's the total um, operation from the 10th of May onward. So that's uh, Case Yellow during that whole operation. 3,500 British were killed and 13,053 were wounded. All the heavy equipment had been had to be abandoned. Um, left behind in France were 2,472 guns, 20,000 motorcycles, and almost 65,000 other vehicles. Also abandoned were 416,000 long tons of trucks, uh, or tons of stores, 423,000 tons of stores, equipment. Uh, more than 75,000 long tons um, of ammunition and 162,000 long tons, uh, 165,000 tons of fuel. Almost all of the 445 British tanks that had been sent to France with the British Expeditionary Force were abandoned. Um, six British and three French destroyers were sunk along with nine other merchant major vessels. Well, um, in addition, not, that here it is, in addition, 19 destroyers were damaged. Okay. <clears throat> and, because I know it can be confusing for the numbers of Dunkirk and then for the whole campaign uh, that led to that, that led to Dunkirk. Over 200 British and Allied sea craft were sunk with uh, a similar number damaged. We're at the Royal Navy's most significant losses in the operation were six destroyers. Okay. Grafton, sunk by U-62, 29th of May. Grenade, sunk by air attack at Dunkirk, 29th of May. Wakeful, sunk by a torpedo attack from the E-boat S-30, 29th of May. Basilisk, Havant, and Keith, sunk by air attack off the beaches on 1st of June. The French Navy lost three destroyers. Borsky mined off Newport on the 30th of May. Taroko sunk by the E-boats um, 23 and 26 on the, 30, on the 31st of May. Le Fauteuillant uh, sunk by air attack on off the beaches on June 1st. And of course the RAF lost 145 aircraft, of which at least 42 were Spitfires. Well, the Luftwaffe lost 156 aircraft in operations in the nine days of Operation Dynamo, including 35 destroyed by Royal Navy ships, plus 21 damaged during the six days from um, 27th of May to June 1st. Amazing. And the German losses. Um, the German losses for this time um, estimate total 20,000 killed and wounded. Plus 100, I think that that's just for Dunkirk. Um, but I'm Dunkirk and the Battle of Dunkirk and actually the surrounding battles. I think that that's the number. Um, 240 aircraft in theater. They lost 100 tanks and 156 aircraft on the Dunkirk front. And that's from the Battle of Dunkirk and surrounding. For every seven soldiers who escaped through Dunkirk, one man was left behind as a prisoner of war. The majority of these prisoners were sent on forced marches into Germany. Prisoners reported brutal treatment by their guards, including beatings, starvation, and murder. Another complaint was that German guards kicked over buckets of water that had been left at the roadside by French civilians for the marching prisoners to drink. Many of the prisoners were marched to the city of Trier, uh, Trier with the march taking as long as 20 days. 20 days. I thought it was... Uh, I must have read it wrong, though, so it's not... It wasn't... Uh, two to four days, I mean, for some cases it might have been if it was uh, in the, um, going to behind frontline German units for um, a number of days, but some of them were marched for as long as 20 days. Amazing. Others were marched to the River Scheldt and were sent by barge 
to the rue, uh, so okay, to, to the rue, um, the roar, sorry, the roar. The prisoners were then sent by rail to prisoner of war camps in Germany. Okay, so that's the two to four days or um, six to eight days, depending on where they are. The majority, those below the rank of corporal, then worked in German industry and agriculture for the remainder of the war. For those of the British Expeditionary Force who, di who died or were captured and have no known grave are commemorated on the Dunkirk Memorial. That's Operation Dynamo. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, I'm Aaron Boma, Military Specialist for Carleton County. Talk to everybody soon.